Hello everyone and welcome back to Dark Souls 3. Things are getting quite action packed. I've been recording and recording all weekend, but probably by the time you're seeing this, the weekend is long done. Um, get a nice beautiful view of Lothric Castle, I would like to believe, and the Ashen Cemetery is down to the right hand side. The amount of exploration I've done in my secondary save has opened up a world of possibilities. And even though we could initiate the end game sequence, I believe it will be interesting to visit two more locations, uh, which are actually major locations, that I think are necessary. You, you, me. <laughs> Estes Shard. Um, I think that they are very important locations. And I was shocked to find that they actually do exist. But before I do that, I would like to experiment and check if the chest here is actually open or closed. Ah. It's closed. People may be wondering why I'm surprised that this chest is closed. I remember this chest by the end of the video, please, I beg you, remember, we found this chest closed and I'm going to open it. By the end of the video, remember this. It's not a mimic, just so you know. You got the covetous silver serpent ring. Same treasure. For people wondering, I'm just making reference to what should happen at the end of this episode. A silver ring depicting a snake that could have been, but never was, a dragon. Fallen foes yield more souls. Snakes are known as creatures of great avarice, devouring prey even larger than themselves by swallowing them whole. If one's shackles are a cause of discontent, perhaps it's, ta perhaps it's time for some old-fashioned greed. There's always been this um, theory within these Souls games that there is relation between wyverns, dragons, and serpents. That serpents are a more primitive or at least an older form of dragons or at least related in some way i can't really explain now let's just give the estus flask shot that we got and make some progress can we reinforce any further nope we don't have a slab hmm it's it's really amazing. Let's see if there are any things that we got here that I could read about before we head on out. Lorian's armor. Armor of Prince Lothric's older brother Lorian. Um, this black dyed brass armor was passed down to him from the royal family. Lorian raised as a knight is said to have been left mute and crippled by his younger brother's curse. It's also said that Lorian in fact wished it so. So when I was talking about how the royal family was trying to make um, a perfect heir to the throne, I thought Lorien was born crippled and mute. Um, but apparently when he decided to take his brother's curses when he became mute and crippled. So why wasn't he befitting to be King Lothric? King of Lothric? I, I'm not too sure why the family decided he wasn't good enough. But then in that case, then, at least we know his younger brother was weak, so he couldn't really be king. But then why Lorian couldn't be king is beyond me. I, I'm not too sure what they hated about him. Exile Mask, Iron Mask of the Watchdogs of Farron's Keep. After the Legion's Watchers became Lords of Cinder, the wolf blood dried up. Funnily enough, there's reference that the wolf blood came from the first man to enter the abyss and come out tainted, who we know as Artorius. And Farron was consumed by festering wood. We did defeat the cursed great wood, so would that mean that general location could be Farron itself? Within the wood, an emaciated old wolf commands watchdogs to defeat the sanctity of sleeping warriors. Both the exiles were surely watchdogs themselves, for Farron has always been a land of Eternerence. 
could be talking about the wood just in the swamp that became uh, poisonous. That's what devoured Farron. Or it could be talking about the cursed great wood. Or both. I'm not too sure. There's a lot of lore in this game that's confusing, it's difficult to understand, but I do have to say it is worth the trouble. See if there are any other things that I would like to give. Okay, this is our end game item, so we won't be using that or giving it to anybody. We need fire bombs. Do we have fire bombs? No, we don't. Do I have any souls to buy fire bombs? Yes, we do. 40,000 to be exact. Uh. Let's get 20 fire bombs. Get a few of those. Get a few of those. Get a few of those. Ashen one. And what's our requirement for the next level? Need 6,000 more souls. That should be fine. And can use one of these. Or maybe two. Yep, one's well, enough. Very well, then take. Hmm. Remember that chest that we opened? Where we're going now is very tricky. If I can remember, where is the dance of the Boreal Valley? In the beginning, when we defeated the dancer, we were sent to find uh, Prince Lothric. And we did. And we found Lorien as well. The path was down this way. But towards the left hand side I had stated that there was a garden. But we never actually ventured the garden. One interesting thing, I don't know where we got the description from, stated that there was the king of Lothric and he had the youngest son who was also Lot. So when I thought when I saw the two princes in that battle, I had thought that the youngest brother, Prince Lothric, was the ocelot they spoke of, but I realized then that we haven't actually met the king. And we haven't met this ocelot. So the swamps, or should I say this garden, hopefully should have our answers. Hopefully I won't die to this guy. Kick please. Nope. No kick for me. No kick for me. Me to Figure out what this whole kick thing is. Why I'm, I'm, I'm failing to press two buttons at once. But it ain't so bad. He's dead anyway. Over here. Should be a place for me to drop off if I can find it. The consumed king's garden. Get another Estes flask shard. I'll probably use later on. It's definitely interesting what happened to the king. Our job right now is to avoid these guys, whatever means necessary. Avoid all their attention. Down in that door is the contraption that didn't move, move leading back to the castle, but our path is this way and is currently blocked. So, 
We're going to have to be quite stealthy about it and make a quick dash. We will catch their attention, but this is a fight we definitely don't want to fight. Go, 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 go! Okay. I think we are fine. And we get Hawkwood Summon. Whenever he's ready. Hawkwood the Deserter. Oh. Our friend who deserted the uh, Farron, Farron's Undead Legion. But hopefully he won't be deserting us today. Okay. Okay. Kill him. Kill him. Attack him. <laughs> Sometimes summons can let you die. Easily let you die and you wonder. What are you here for? Okay. Get the magic stone plate ring. Let's check out what that's all about. Increases magic, magic damage absorption. Uh, stone plates are symbols of true knights, and blue stone plates are granted to royal palace guards. Increase magic absorption. Hmm. Trying to think what ring can I use in this fight that I need. That I need dearly. screams ah, you ignorant slaves finally taken notice have you of the power of my beloved Ocelot, child of dragons. Well, I will not give him up, for he is all that I have. King consumed Osirius, king of Lothric, I believe, or he was once king. Very buggy ah, fight, though. Dear little Osirius, where have you gone? Are you hiding from me? Come out! Come out! Don't be afraid. You were born a child of dragons. What could you possibly fear? Now.
that was a ridiculous amount of counter hit damage that I was pulling through. But like I said, the fight is very glitchy. It's a terrible fight. The, the guy, his movements hardly ever hit you and he always goes running off doing nothing. It's, it's a very badly done uh, fight. I don't think the coding was really done well. Um, but we did get King Osiris' soul. Soul of Osiris, Osirius, the consumed king. Osirius went mad trying to harness his royal blood for a greater purpose, leading him to the heretics of the Grand Archives, where he discovered the twisted worship of Seath the Pale Drake. So there was a struggle, a conflict, to make a worthy heir for the throne. King Lothric had, I'm assuming the king, um, how can I say this? First of all, I'm assuming the queen, Queen Lothric, fled. I'm, I'm not sure where she went to. The Queen Lothric married to the former king Osirius. There we go. This is the, the dialogue that we need. The Queen Lothric married to the former king Osirius, so they were both the king and queen of Lothric, was initially revered as goddess of fertility and bounty. After giving birth to Ocelot, her youngest, she quietly disappeared. Whether that means she faded out of existence similar to how the flame fades away, I'm not too sure, or by quietly disappeared means that she vanished or she left stealthily, I'm, I'm not too sure. But the king and queen, Osirius and Queen Lothric, Queen Lothric, I'm, I'm assuming to be Guinevere. That's my assumption. At least another form of her. They had children together. One was Lorien, one was uh, Lothric, and one was Ocelot, the final one. But the thing is, Lorien and Lothric were not worthy successors to the throne. So King Osirius ended up going into dragon worship and dragon research similar to Logan and they found he found the Grand Archives, he found people worshipping Seath and he ended up transforming himself into a, hum uh, a dragonoid. He still maintained part of his human nature within him or his godly nature within him as you could see he could still speak in a tongue that we could understand. But he kept on mentioning that Ocelot is still alive, he's protecting Ocelot. Where is Ocelot? I don't know. Um, that's a very tricky situation, but before we enter this door, I wanted to do something, but I don't know what. Hold on a second. Hmm. I've totally forgotten what I wanted to do. I wanted to teleport somewhere, but goddamn. But usually these doors, like seen by a King Warner's tomb, these doors have very important significance, but I don't know what it is. These are the same doors that in Dark Souls 2 you found Havel's armor hidden away. Uh, these are the same doors that led you to the Abyss. These are the same doors that led you to the Boreal Valley, or at least Irithyll of the Boreal Valley. But we now know that there is a sect of dragon worshippers. We found that King Osirius was trying to manipulate his own blood and the blood of dragons to make Ocelot a worthy successor. But it didn't work out. He ended up going partly insane. And here we see corpses of men who also bear some resemblance, some serpentine resemblance. Maybe these could be cast away dragon worshippers who didn't make the full transformation. At least that's what I'm thinking of. But one thing I think about what he was saying about dragons and Ocelot, he was guarding this door. King Osirius didn't enter this door, he was guarding it, searching for his child. And you could hear the screams and, and cries of a baby in the background. And here we find someone meditating the path of the dragon
interesting piece of dialogue that we get from the item here, the Torso Stone. It says, Stone imbued with the power of the everlasting dragons used in a sacred rite by dragon worshippers. From ancient times, the path of dragon worship was walked by warriors. It is said they envisioned Archdrake Peak in the depths of their meditation, and at times they even hear the distant sound of the great bell at the peak. So they would enter this meditation pose and envision Archdrake Peak. I'm assuming that's where the, the dragons were. And that was the home of the dragon, so they ended up seeing this and further enlightened them to how the dragons were. So that's a meditation pose we'll be using later on. But also I feel that King Osiris was guarding this tomb because of the power that was involved with this tomb. There's something very deep about it. I think he understood what was going on. My take on this tomb is that this is a path to an alternate dimension. But not alternate in the sense that it's completely untied to the dimension we live in. I actually think that this is a door to the past in between linkings of fires. This is a dark period between two flames. At first I thought that this was the future and that this is when darkness had spread. But later on, you'll see that there's actually suggestion that this is actually in the past, in between two flames. But first, let's go level up. Hmm. Mm. Let's go. Give you a headache if you're not well, careful. <laughs> very well, then. Let's level up. See what we can get here. I believe we did get a Estes Flask shard. That's what I wanted to do actually. Mm. But yeah, I do I do enjoy the tie-ins, the references to other games, the references to other times during the history of this world. And I, I still maintain this alternate dimensions, that there are many parallel dimensions to the same story, different dimensions that led to different alternatives of uh, outcomes. But they're all still intertwined and the world is still shifting. I feel that the world is shifting towards a central point, bringing everything back together. This twisted sword, the heaviest of all ultra great swords, resembles black slate. This we weapon, said to belong to a traitor from long ago, was also heavy, was so heavy that it found no owner and became a forgotten relic. Fume Ultra Knight Great Sword. Very awesome sword. No shards. Let's head back to the Anten. So, when we rose, from our grave, we rose to the Cemetery of Ashes, and we met Index Ginder. But then now we go to the Untended Graves. And actually, if we buy a Hidden Blessing, or do we have one already? No, we don't. Let's buy, not even buy, just read. Holy Water Blessed by Queen Lothric. There is a grave in Lothric that sees no visitors. A dark place where rootless warriors rest. The Queen Lothric alone cared to wish the poor souls good fortune. Ashen one. A grave that receives no visitors and a dark place where rootless warriors are. These are the untended graves. An alternate dimension somewhere. An alternate dimension somewhere I believe to be in the past and I'll explain why as soon as we clear the location. But it also... my first... Some amazing place really. Just the changing of lighting has changed the entire mood of this place. But at first I thought maybe this could be the future. The darkness has spread, no one linked the fire. But Oh, 
What are these Corvians doing here? I'm not too sure. They are actually tending to the grave in which we rose from in the beginning of the game. So could you say... In this timeline, we never rose from the dead. We just stayed dead. The, be the bell never tolled. And we just remained dead. Very interesting thing. I believe we rose from the mud somewhere around here when the game started. This technically isn't our coffin, I would like to believe. But we never rose this time. I got the Ashen Estus Ring. A grey crystalline ring crafted from shards increases FP restored by Estus, uh, Ashen Estus. Once a treasure brought before Lothrop Queen, she had it enshrined in the cemetery of untended graves, so that one day an unkindled might profit from its use. So did Queen Lothric realize that there would be some unkindled who would be able to move between dimensions? Did she believe that there was one undead who could time travel? Because time travel has been a thing in Dark Souls 1, we revisited Ulusil in the past and saw how that unfolded. In Dark Souls 2, you start the game by going into an alternate portal. So... What that means for the game, I'm not too sure. I felt that Dark Souls 2 was just a whole entire... What? Was that a missed backstab or something? Missed backstab almost got me killed. I love how dogs can go from laying still to instantly hitting you and staggering you in zero seconds. These guys do have a lot of HP to, d uh, to, to work with. Got another titanite chunk. And back here I remember we had um, some crystal lizards. And now things have changed a little bit. We've got two crystal lizards. And the first one is you don't want to move into a oh don't want to move into a open area because you might attract the second one. So you kind of have to fight it down here in the corner. Dirty fight. It's funny how there are still rays of light here. I'm not sure if they use this to illuminate the two crystal lizards from the from afar so that you could see that they're actually there. Or are they still rays of light in this world? Is there still a little bit of flame? I'm not too sure because the only illuminating light 
there's very few and far between like here as well there's light there unexplained because there's no light sources in this area lots of unexplained details in the unattended graves in the darkness the abyss so at least now you get to see a resemblance of what the world could be with no powerful souls with no souls at all a world with no light and to be honest with you it's a pretty scary place no tolling bell for the undead the chosen undead to ring no bell to toll the awakening of the unkindled no kingdoms just darkness we can't even see Lothric from here So the trigger is at the base of the hill. Oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> that was very, very tricky. Trying to hit me off the cliff. Daughter of the Crystal Cray Maid. <coughs> I believe we've seen that name before, at least I have. Maybe not have a save. I believe we've defeated the actual Crystal Lady. And this is her daughter. My question is what would she be doing in the first place? What is she waiting for? Revenge? She knew would be here? Or this is just her home? Didn't even... Okay, so when I don't want to kick... This is when I kick wildly. When I do, it's a whole different story. Oh, what? That, <laughs> that made me poop my pants, I swear. Hidden Blessing. I guess we could have got the Hidden Blessing dialogue from here. It's as if they really want you to know that Queen Lothric tended to these graves. She was the only one who did so. And I think it's very important to let you know this. Sword master. As our summon for this fight. Very interesting. That when you read the sword master's item description, if we have time. Men are fond of weaving tales to explain the raggedness of their garb. My sixth sense warned me of danger, and I danced between flurries of blades, unscathed, but alas, my clothes went to tatters. When you read this, it makes you think that whoever I was wearing it was just lying just to give an excuse as to why his clothes are as bad as they are. Um, but then when you actually do find 
the sword master in this dark tainted world you might actually start to believe that he actually is a sword master and not just a liar and here we find Ginda once again but not index but champion This time he doesn't seem to be a coil, a sheath for the, the coiled sword. He just seemed to be asleep, awaiting contenders. is going to him. Oh, come on. Swordmaster just died so easily and left me to die like this. Just need one more hit, champion. <laughs> the most. This has to be the most cinematic location to kill the boss. Just this fear. I think you can get it from a better angle further down. Just like that. It makes you think. When you first came here, that coiled sword was actually stuck inside Genda, I believe, the first time you came here. Well, at least the Cemetery of Ash. But sadly enough, Get the Black Knight Halberd here. At least we can heal up and continue all the way to Firelink Shrine. It's quite interesting to get to see Champion Ginda 
it's quite interesting to see how things are now in Firelink Shrine. But first, before doing so, let's see what Champion Ginda Soul says. Soul of the Champion Ginda. Once a champion came late to the festivities and was greeted by the shrine without fire and a bell that would not toll. Once a champion came late to the festivities and was greeted by a shrine without fire and a bell up there that would not toll. So I'm assuming that in this particular time, fe the festivities that they could be talking about would be a linking of the fire of some sort. But the champion never came to the fe festivities. So I'm assuming no, if he's the champion, I would assume he would be the strongest fighter. If so, he wasn't there. And maybe the fire was then not linked because the champion missed the festivities. I'm not too sure what that's all about. How Ginda is important to the linking of whatever flame was linked. But he missed it. He came and it was too late. It was too late. The fire was not linked. Black Knights are here, so I'm assuming it was an important linking of the fire. And it's not far from Gwyn's time. Well, at least Gwyn's... Oh, come on. Well, at least Gwyn's soldiers are still here, even though Gwyn is long gone. Here's the shrine. Right, it's possible to go exploring a bit. As you can see what exactly has been going on here. So I don't know. Maybe Ginda was supposed to come and ensure as champion that the fire would be linked. But he missed it totally. And why is the Chaos Blade now located where the Swordmaster is in our present time that we started in? A cursed sword unknown of unknown origin bearing uncanny streaks on the blade. The sword is not unlike a thing mis mishappen. Granted life but never welcome in this world. In other words, chaos itself. So at least the existence of the chaos blade would in turn mean that the birth of chaos has already happened. Well at least these black knights have already been charred by the first battle with the demons. Soul of a crest wall, a fallen warrior. This is the most interesting grave in this entire unattended cemetery. If you look any closer, you could dare say that this is Artorius's blade, or at least one blade of a Faron soldier which resembles Artorius, the wolf's blade. But then, not only that, but what's located by the grave is the hornet ring. Ring associated with the Lord's Blade Kyrian, one of the four knights of Gwyn the First Lord. 
The mass Kyrian was the only woman to serve in Gwyn's four knights, and her curved sword granted a swift death to any and all enemies of the throne. The only person we know who buried Artorias after we killed him as the chosen undead was Kyrian. She buried him in Ulysil. Could that be his grave? And could that be Kyrian's corpse? Because she said she would watch over the grave. And here's Firelink Shrine. Oh, at least here's the shrine. But there is no fire. <sighs> the lords left and never returned. The undead legion swords are still there. I'm not sure if these thrones are meant to be there or it was Ludwig isn't there the Farron's swords being there meant could mean that this timeline is closer to ours than I would have thought it would be I thought it was more into the past as in this was a time before the Lords of Cinder linked their flames like each individual person here was part of the linking of the fire that brought upon the timeline which we are in in this game but then since these people aren't here you would think that these are the thrones that belong to the lords before them but if you read the descriptions it's still yom the giant it's still the watchers of the abyss etc so these are still their thrones. Could that mean this is a timeline in which nobody got the lords back? Coiled sword fragment. Fragment of a coiled sword of a bonfire which served its purpose long ago. So that's the, that's the part that I don't understand is that I still believe that this is in the past. But these names are of present lords. Returns caster to bonfire used for resting, blah blah blah, can be used repeatedly. So this is like the aged feather. Bonfires are linked to one another irreversibly, retaining their affinity long after their purpose is exhausted. So this is an exhausted bonfire that the one who came before us used. And the only person left still in here is this handmaiden. Or should I say the only person who's been here for all this time has been the handmaiden. Like I said, I feel that the lands are shifting into one mass. Everything is coming back together. Blacksmith hammer. If I can find it. Hmm. I think I've gone blind. What? Hold on a second. Usually the hammer icon is the head of the hammer, right? There you go. <clears throat> Metal hammer passed down amongst blacksmith of the shrine. Serves as a strike weapon, but also excels at reducing poison, breaking the guard of a shield. Of course, a hammer's true potential is realized in the hands of a blacksmith. So, if this is a time in the past, could this be a point in which Andre hadn't moved to the shrine just yet? Because the thing is, Andre, during our present time, still understood that the giant blacksmith in Anolondo was his friend, and Anolondo had fallen long ago. So Andre has been alive for a long time, so that means he's seen multiple kingdoms or at least multiple fires fade and be rekindled. So where could he be now during the time of darkness? Hiding? And get a hollow's ashes. Let's see where they are. Are they a key item? There we go. Humble ash of a hollow who faithfully served a woman, only to become separated from her. With this, the shrine handmaid will prepare new items. It takes but a brief glance at this thing to easily envision Londo. 
the foreboding land of hollows. A hollow who served a woman and they were separated from each other. A hollow who served a woman. A hollow who served a human. There are many names, many cities named after Londo. There's been Anno Londo, the place of the gods. There's been New Londo, the place of the humans. Could Londo have been the first settlement that all the humanoid creatures settled in in the beginning after they defeated the dragons? And here we see the firekeeper hiding away beside, behind an illusory wall, probably scared of the darkness. And we get the eyes of the firekeeper. A pair of dark eyes, say to be the eyes of the first fire keeper, and the light that ha wait, and the light that was lost by all fire keepers to come. It reveals to the slightest fire keepers things, or the sightless fire keepers things that they should never see. Say to be the eyes of the first fire keeper, and the light that was lost by all fire keepers to come. So this is after the first flame faded. Could this be after Gwyn turned hollow in the kiln? Oh, could this be the time in which the flame was fading and then the Black Knights went to leave Gwyn in the kiln to link the fire? So he hasn't, at this point, he hasn't linked the fire. They are scared that darkness is coming. And they've gone to the kiln right now to link the fire. If so, how is the handmaiden still alive? And why does she look like the handmaidens from freaking Dark Souls 2? Well, fancy that. A lost lamb wandereth in with nary a peep from the bell. Well, thou shouldst my purpose know. What can this old handmaid provide thee? To skirt the curse's grasp, tarry not for long. Tis dark for now, and not a soul stirs. But remember, fires are known to fade in quiet. Or perhaps thou'rt captive already, like the poor girl. <laughs> To skirt the curse's grasp, tarry not for long. Tis dark for now, and not a soul stirs. But remember, fires are known to fade in quiet. Or perhaps thou'rt captive already, like the poor girl. <laughs> Which poor girl? Is she talking about the firekeeper that's already dead? Priestess ring. A ring engraved with the portraits of the high priestess. Increases faith. In Lothric, the high priestess has long been considered one of the three pillars of the king's rule. The high priestess also serves as the prince's witness. The thing is, the items that she sells could just be for gameplay related reasons, but if you were to look at them for story related reasons why would she have a priestess ring of lothric because you would assume the kingdom of lothric didn't exist after, during the time of the first flame during the time of Gwyn when he went hollow as getatorius's armor armor of the night tainted by the dark of the abyss the twilight blue cape is damp and will ever remain so a vanquished knight left behind only wolf's blood and his legacy of duty. The undead legion of Farron was formed to bear this torch, and the armor of these abyss watchers suggests their only eventual end. Hmm. Best not her. Best not tarry long before you get stuck in the darkness. 
Ah, this place has con confused me a multitude of times. Honestly, don't know what to think. Part of me thinks this is when Gwyn had went to link the first, uh, to rekindle the fire for the first time. Burning himself, turning himself hollow. This is before the beginning of Dark Souls 1. Artorias is dead, Ulysses has fallen. The world is shrouded in darkness. You would actually think everything is merging together. But then that would signify the end times, not the beginning. Or are all myriads of darkness linked together? And time just keeps repeating itself. Now here's one jump that I want to try and make. It will take quite a while, so bear with me. The reason why I'm trying to make this jump is because the, this door doesn't open and the ladder there is gone. Well, it's not even there, so I can't drop this way without using the tree. I don't think this jump is supposed to be able to be made. You're not supposed to be able to come up this way. And if it were to be intended, then that's some next level stuff uh, of meta that they could design into this game. If you continue down further that way, you continue around Firedink Shrine to where the Twinkling Titanite was in the beginning, but that's not our concern right now. Our concern is what's up here. Remember that chest I was talking about in the beginning? The wall is already broken. So that means it is considered as one location through and through no matter which direction you come from. And if you notice, the chest is already opened by me. So that means these two locations are linked. Maybe not by time. 
but through something, these places are linked. Guaranteed. So, I don't know what else to say about this location. Well. She has nothing else she can Best give us. Not Best not tarry long. Let's head back home. Well, I guess for now that would have to be it. Let's give her these hollow ah, ashes. Well met. How may I, be I love the way no one has anything to say about what Gracious. I just did. Passing fine ash thou hast given. Let this ash bestow nourishment. I only hope these new wares content thee. <laughs> Now, if we look at the items, there are some old items and some new ones. The Purging Stone. Ash-colored stone encasing a skull. Reduces undead curse buildup and cures hollowing. Inhabitants of Londo, the land of hollows, use the secret treasure to feign normalcy. Occasionally a hollow fools himself and turns on his own kind. Poison throwing knife used by assassins of Londo, land of hollows. The poison is jokingly known as Hollow's Blood. So that's why I'm assuming New Londo and Olondo were named after this old settlement, the first settlement of Hollows. I'm assuming that this was before. This was before they defeated the dragons and got the Lord Souls. That's where Londo could be. The first place of Hollows, the Pilgrim. Not the pilgrim, the fugitive pygmies and stuff. Washing pole. An extremely length of this blade provides immense immense range, but also renders the blade extremely fragile. Hmm. I, I remember there was some armor I'd wanted to talk about before we left. Okay, here's Lorian's armor. Armor of the Prince Lothric's older brother, Lorian. This black dyed brass armor was passed down to him from the from the royal family. Lorian raised as a knight is also said to have been left mute and crippled by his younger brother's curse. It's also said that Lorian in fact wished it so. He wished to be mute and crippled after taking the curse. He wanted to take the curse. So in that regard, I had thought that he manipulated his younger brother, but I mean his younger brother was manipulating him being the smarter one. I was, I think I'm wrong. He actually wanted this. Now this is what makes me believe that we just did some time traveling. That King Lothric, uh, Osirius, actually was guarding a gate to the past. Ancient Helm. First of all, the word ancient means old, but we just came from there. Ancient Helm of a set cast in iron armor. Belonged to Champion Ginda, modeled after a former king. So this armor is modeled after a former king. We don't know who the king is. Genda, or the belated champion, was bested by an unknown warrior. He then became a sheath to the coiled sword in the hopes that someday the first flame would be linked once more. That's the mind-blowing... That's the mind-blowing stuff right there. Genda, or the belated champion, we know that he was late to the festivities. So he missed the celebration of flame and i'm assuming the festivities actually were that he missed the lifespan of the first fire when he came to the location of the celebration i.e the life of the flame it was already late the flame was completely faded and a probably a little bit was left and then Gwyn and his soldiers were now leaving to the kiln to try rekindle the first flame Ginda being the champion couldn't attend these festivities, he was late. Then he was bested by an unknown warrior. We just killed champion Ginda. So could that warrior have been us? We went into the past, similar to how an unknown warrior bested Artorias of the Abyss, and we were the person who went back in time to kill him. It then goes on to say, he then became sheath to a coiled sword in hopes that someday the first flame would be linked once more. When we find him at the beginning of the game, the coiled sword that we made Firelink Shrine burn with was actually stuck in his chest. 
That's when he became Index Gender, the sheath of the sword. Hoping that the first flame would be linked once more. So I'm assuming when we took the sword from him, his hopes came true. Because now we have all the Lords of Cinder and there could be a chance we could link the flame. So we just went back in time. Ashen one. Huh? Ashen one. Bring me with is it? Ashen one. That I don't know. This woman's been there since the beginning of time. We've even seen her in the alternate dimension of Dark Souls 2. Ah damn I don't know what's going on. But for now, this episode has gone on for way too long. In the next episode, hopefully we'll go find out the truth about the dragons. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.